We start with LSU and UAB. We haven't really said anything about UAB this week. Um, briefly touched on the fact that it seems like a pretty good matchup for LSU, um, but haven't really gotten into the nuts and bolts of it. So I guess we'll start there here on a Thursday. Of course, everyone familiar with UAB and what happened uh, in 2000 uh, in 2001 when LSU uh, got beat by UAB. I was uh, 13 years old inside Tiger Stadium there at a friend's birthday weekend. Parents took uh, took a couple of friends down to watch LSU crush UAB, and uh, Josh Booty threw an interception, and UAB kicked a field goal, and LSU lost. And that was very sad for a 13-year-old Hunt Palmer. But um, LSU got the better of him in 2013. You were a part of that ball game. I think all that anybody remembers about that game is that Odell ran a kick six back. Uh, but Matt had five touchdown passes in that game, too. Yeah, that was uh, one of those stat games, as we say. <laughs> Not much uh, opposition coming from the other team that, that week. Sad. Normally, I can remember at least one player from the opposing defense, no. but uh, I, I don't know if I remember anyone from that day. That was just a absolute beating that they took, and uh, that's the kind of one you get the starters out in the third quarter. UAB is a fascinating story in terms of the college football landscape because their program went away. And to me, it was a little bit jarring because when I think of football programs going away, I think of Centenary College in Shreveport that's tiny and you know, doesn't have the infrastructure to support a football program. But UAB was a real football program. And for them to go away, I, mean, I was like, whoa, that's, that's, not, that's not insignificant. But they came back, um, and they've won 48 games since returning to football in 2017. And that's the most of any team in Conference USA during that span. So Bill Clark deserves a massive amount of credit for resurrecting, literally, this football program that was dead that he brought back, and now they're competent and competitive. He tossed uh, the keys to the car last year to Brian Vincent, who's their uh, interim head coach this year, and they have played pretty well this year. By now, if you are a you know big-time fan of LSU and try to get involved, it's part of your week is is getting ready for the LSU game on, on, on Saturdays, which I think a lot of our audience certainly would fall into that category. You know that UAB is a very good running football team. That's That's something that's just the first thing that comes up when you talk about UAB. And statistically, that is absolutely the case. Dwayne McBride is the nation's leading rusher. Um, it's a distinction he's held since week five of this season. McBride is averaging 156 yards per game. That is tops in the country. He's run for over 100 yards in every game this year and 10 straight dating back to last season. Uh, he was sick for the first game, but he's played the rest. Uh, he's also nationally the leader in terms of rushes for yards of 20 yards. He's second in rushing touchdowns and total rushing yards. He's uh, third in scoring and fifth in yards per carry. So in all those categories we just ripped off, he's in the top five of the country. You quite simply cannot do that if you're not a talented football player. Uh, yeah. I think he's not playing with a team that's so much more talented than the teams they are playing against that – they're just blowing people over. This is a five and five football team. So if you're playing on basically evil footing, even footing with the guys you're playing against and you lead the country in rushing, that's a heck of a football player. No, he is. And uh, anytime you're at that point, almost on the verge of getting 2000 yards in a, in a college season, that's absolutely impressive. I don't care what level it's on. And I think obviously, you know, going into Baton Rouge, that's going to be on the game plan. Like they're going to want to get him the ball. They're going to want to get their offense going. He only has one reception on the year, so I'm pretty safe to say that they're going to be handing that ball yep. to him and figuring out ways to get him the ball in the run game. And uh, if you're Matt House in this LSU defense, uh, you got to take on the challenge. That's the only way this team can even make this remotely close of a football game with some of the losses that they have on their schedule. Um, they're going to want to run the ball and run the clock and keep you know Jaden the rest of his offense off the field. So if you don't shut him down all, uh, early on, it's, it could be a long day for you. They're going to give him the football early and often, there's no doubt. One of the things that you know in covering LSU – uh, back in the early 2010s when you were playing um, and kind of diving into matchups and that kind of stuff. One of the things that you notice pretty quickly when LSU plays out of conference, especially down a league or two, is that usually there's a wide receiver running back that's got some ability because there's just a lot of six foot one, 220 pound guys that can run and cut and carry the football. Usually the massive mismatch is in the trenches, and it's either just men against boys figuratively or you, you've got just a, a skill level and strength advantage. But I'll tell you this, UAB is not small on the offensive line. I know numbers don't play great on the radio, but I'll go through them pretty quickly. 
But UAB's left tackle is 6'8", 330 in a senior. That ain't small. That's not small for the Titans. Uh, their left guard is 6'3", 310. A little bit undersized, but not significantly. 310 pounds is still plenty of football player. Center, 6'2", 305. That's right on par with what you see a lot of times in the SEC. Right guard, 6'4", 320. That's about right. And right tackle, 6'4", 330 pounds. So they're not... It's not like they got a couple of 285 pound offensive linemen. Like they're big dudes that LSU will will have to line up and and beat. Now, if they were elite football players, three or four of them probably play, be playing for Auburn or Mississippi State or you know Florida State. But they're at UAB. But they've done a really good job this year running the football, no doubt. No, you can't take that away from this team. And uh, to me, that's probably the most difficult thing to do in this day and age of college football, and that's sticking with the run, but not only doing that, but doing it at an extremely high level. And anytime you got offensive linemen that are that big, uh, you have to do what you do in the run game, and that's move grown men against their will. When you got the size to back it, it just makes that a little easier transaction for you. So I, like we said before uh, with this UAB team, they're going to really, really try to run the ball. Like I wouldn't be shocked if you see eight or nine guys in the box from Matt House and the crew because – you know, you feel great about your matchup on the outside, and I said that going into last week, and Arkansas really wasn't able to do that. It had the lucky touchdown down the sideline, but past that, as far as those receivers match up against those DBs, it just really wasn't much there, and I think it'll be a lot of that on this Saturday. So the only other way for them to really make hay in this game is to run the ball. So you're going to have to stop that early. The, uh, the sour grapes alarm go off when you say lucky touchdown pass. I said that on Monday, and I still feel that way. And here's why, and this is not important, but you said it, so it's, it's worth a talking point. If LSU had a quarterback make that throw, 99.9% of LSU fans go, what a throw, right on the money, down the sideline, right with a guy in his face, Perkins is bearing down on him, he hits a right in stride for the touchdown, unbelievable throw. Okay, yeah, great throw, but the fact of the matter is, you're playing third-team quarterback at Arkansas for a reason. You probably don't make that throw very often, and no one you know, said you couldn't throw the ball 15 yards down the field, which is what he did. So <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I think it was a lucky throw. Uh, but you mentioned lining up LSU in this game with eight, nine guys in the box just to stop the run. And that makes a lot of sense because I started looking up stats on UAB, and I'm like, wait a second, they're 5-5. Five and five. They're losing to teams like UTSA, Liberty, Rice, Western Kentucky, Florida Atlantic. Like, how are they leading the nation in rushing? And they're losing to these teams. They must not be able to do anything else on offense. So I start looking up and I go, okay, Conference USA statistics, passing offense, dead last. And I'm like, oh, well, that's really bad. Clearly, they can't throw the football. But a little bit more research determines that their starting quarterback missed the last two losses that they played in. I think that probably um, is going to hinder you a little bit. So Dylan Hopkins will be back in this game after he missed a couple of their losses. He's completing nearly 70% of his throws. He's not a turnover machine. He's thrown eight touchdowns and two picks. So I think it makes a little bit more sense when you take two of the games out. They're more like a 5-3 and three team at full strength with their quarterback playing. Put the backup in. I can understand why things would go south. They're not exactly um, the Kansas City Chiefs when it comes to the passing game. But I think that statistically, if I just read off, well, they're the worst passing offense in Conference USA. They stink. They might not be very good, but... When your starting quarterback goes out and you're at UAB, I don't think you're going to bring in a first-round pick right off the bench to go in there and play. That's <laughs> yeah. just my thought. Yeah, no, obviously uh, having your starting quarterback, I, I think any team on any level is going, is going to want to have that guy out there for their team. But even with that being said, I don't think he's one of those guys that is Patrick Mahomes or one of these guys. It's He's still trying to hand the ball off. They're, they're going to want to get the ball to McBride. That's going to be their whole game plan and what they're trying to do. And so – even with the starting quarterback, they're still the receivers are on the outside. It's not like those guys are lighting the world on fire with touchdowns and yards per catch or anything like that. So uh, I think either guy's in there. It's going to be really what you saw last week against Arkansas, a very similar game plan. If Arkansas doesn't get the run game going, it's going to be a long day, and I think it's really going to be the same thing you're going to see again on Saturday. Same with Arkansas, same with Ole Miss, same with Auburn, same with Florida. <laughs> I mean, they're just we, we've seen it done at the, at the SEC level, and it hasn't been done exceptionally well. I don't have a ton of reason to believe that it's going to be a huge struggle for LSU to stop the run coming up on Saturday night. It may be, uh, but I don't think that it will. Um, briefly um, on this game before we transition to, to Senior Day and, and some of the guys I want to talk about that are and are not participating in Senior Day, um, Tim's going to be uh, around 40 degrees, potentially a light rain falling. I don't think it's going to be a lit-up crowd at 8 o'clock with uh, those kind of <laughs> temperatures. So 
Um, what may that do to the environment and the guy's energy level on senior day against UAB in that kind of weather? I wish you could have that burrow with the EAUX on the well, back coming out. Different. Maybe that'll be a different type of night, but I don't think we have that type of setting for senior night coming up. So uh, maybe, you know, got the SEC already sealed. I'm trying to find something here to yeah. bring the juice a little bit. UAB coming to town, the best rushing attack in the country, maybe? Yeah, that'll get, it. That'll uh, get them going. Yeah, I don't know. See those blazers over there? <laughs> they can really run the rock on Western Kentucky. Get fired up! Yeah, yeah. It's going to be uh, potentially sleepy, but I, I think against this type of opponent – I'll see the last time. I think maybe that may be it. like last time we go to Death Valley and, and see yeah. this football team this year. Maybe that'll do it. But not much you can really point to in a, in a game like this to really get the people out of their seats. Can venture to say by halftime. I don't know what the stadium will look like, but I'm venture to say probably less than fifty, maybe forty five thousand yeah. left in that Plenty place. But of that. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll be more like that. So yeah, I think for LSU, you got to come out there, bring your own juice, stat game like me and my boy Fave always says. Get this thing over with by the first half and. By the, by the second half, you can be thinking about what you're doing after the game, just like all the fans are. I already texted my boy, Big Fave. I said, Fave, you got to dress for this because when we go on the pregame show at 6 o'clock, it's going to be dark, it's going to be 43 degrees, and maybe rain. So <laughs> you better be prepared because you don't get to leave. you gotta, you gotta <laughs> got to suck it up and do the 90-minute pregame show. So I'm going to have on Under Armour sleeves, probably gloves. I, I don't do cold weather. So we're going to get this thing all figured out for Saturday. But – and you got some time. I'm telling you right now, if you're going out there, it's going to be cold. Find the appropriate dress, and we'll see you out on campus on Saturday night. LSU and UAB, an 8.05 kickoff from inside Tiger Stadium. Thanks so much for watching Hunt Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.